Hello and welcome to the CMC Markets Monday Weekly Webinar with myself, Market Analyst David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 13th of November and the time is just gone 12.15. And as always, just before we actually kick off our webinars, what we're going to do is just leave the risk warnings on screen for you guys to have a quick read of that. Um, it's very straightforward. Uh, it essentially states anything that is stated or that, that goes on in this webinar is just merely uh, my just some commentaries and observations from myself. So not not shouldn't be construed as explicit investment advice or trading advice from CMC Markets. Uh, it all it's all fairly it's all fairly straightforward and fairly uh, fairly sh a sh short bit of information for you on the screens there to have a quick read of that. It'll keep my compliance department quite happy, and th this, this will be out of the way, wrapped up uh, in a couple of, in a minute or so time, even less, and then we can track on with the actual webinar itself. Um, now that we actually have the webinar or the risk warning out, out of the way, we can actually just uh, focus on what it's all about, the actual webinar itself. A uh, quick front rundown of what's been going on in uh, in the financial markets. The big news, uh, the big well, the big story of the, uh, of the of the last few days. Uh, there's a report going around that there are uh, up, to, up to 40 British Conservative MPs that are looking to build a case of no confidence against uh, Prime Minister Theresa May, and this has rattled uh, rattled the financial markets and has certainly spooked the British pound. The pound is off nearly six tenths of a percent versus the both both the British both, both the euro and the US dollar. So the initial sell-off in uh, the initial sell-off in, um, in in the British pound was assisting the, the, the FTSE 100 somewhat, but that, but but those gains have seemed to be uh, have seemed to have actually turned over on themselves. Uh, in the eurozone, equity markets are firmly in the red uh, in, in, in in continental Europe. Um, there's been a continuation of the kind of weakness that we've seen essentially ever since last Thursday. Uh, the major sell-off we saw in Japan overnight last Thursday. Uh, really kind of rattled uh, global equity markets. Obviously, markets like uh, the, the DAX in Germany, the CAC in France, were, were at, before that were at all-time highs. We saw all-time highs in U.S. indices last week. And then, of course, we, we then, then, then we, we see a scenario whereby there's a, of, a, of a sudden and sharp sell-off in Japan, and all of a sudden, everyone gets quite nervous. Uh, equity markets have, have had a, broadly speaking, they've had a tremendous bullish run the last number of months, they survived what would have been major hiccups, such as the Catalan crisis, such as the North Korean crisis, but they still went on to create record highs. So traders are kind of using this kind of as a sign of actually just getting out of the market. Uh, I'll take a quick look, look now at the um, what's going on in the major events of the week ahead. Uh, we've, we've quite a few items in terms of uh, corporate uh, well, economic indicators and a few corporate indicators as well. For those of you that don't know where this is located, if you go to the CMC Markets website under news and analysis, this is here. This is where our updates get posted on, on a daily basis. Uh, under the filter by, go to the third option down, weekly outlook, um, and you see here. And you see here the update week commencing the 13th of November. So this is this is sort of the highlights of what to look out for. Tomorrow and Tuesday, we have the early hours of Tuesday morning. We have an update from China. We now get industrial production, fixed asset investment, and retail sales. Also on Tuesday, uh, what we have is we have the UK CPI reading. Uh, CPI in the UK is currently at 3%. High inflation is obviously going to keep putting pressure on the Bank of England, but it was a very dovish hawk. We've had a very dovish rate hike we had for the Bank of England only about only about 10 days ago. So unless we, unless we see signs of inflation skyrocketing, the Bank of England probably won't be looking to move their um, rate, their interest rates. Uh, anytime soon. It's looking towards the end of 2018. Let's look for the next rate hike from the Bank of England. Uh, adding to that, uh, what we also have out on Wednesday is US CPI. US CPI is obviously a, a big, big one to watch out for. C CPI in the US is actually slightly ahead of the Fed's target of 2%. It's currently at 2.2%. But when you actually look at the core inflation stripping out commodity prices such as energy, uh, it's only 1.7%. So sort of an indica indication that demand isn't as high as it actually is, is partially down to the to the turnaround in commodity prices. Uh, what we also have coming out during the week uh, next week is we have unemployment data from the UK, and in the same report we also have wage earnings from the UK. And I actually suspect the wage earnings is going to be the big one to watch out for. Unemployment in the UK is at multi-year, at multi-decade lows. More jobs are being created, which some of the politicians love talking about. 
but our British workers are actually getting a, a, a decent increase in their wages. And we haven't really seen any evidence of that following up. It's almost like employers are just happy to happy to create jobs, or or employees are happy to accept jobs, where, where there's no real um, decent rise in actual wages, let alone real wages, because bear in mind, high inflation erodes the value of the money in your pocket. In terms of corporate events to watch out for, we do, as always, have a lot of corporate uh, corporate, corporate uh, reporting uh, action, uh, corporate reporting events, but the big ones to watch out for this week on both Thursday, um, uh, both of them are coming on Thursday, Royal Mail and also British Land. Scrolling down here, we can take a flick through other companies that have the numbers out. Tomorrow, we have a quarterly update from Home Depot in the US. We have half your numbers out from Land Securities on, on Tuesday, a UK company. Vodafone are also reporting their half your figures out on Tuesday. Scrolling down here to Wednesday, Cisco Systems Q1 numbers from the United States. Target uh, third quarter numbers coming out of the United States. Uh, scrolling down here, we have 3i Group uh, in the UK have half year numbers coming out. We also have a half year update from Investec and the clothing crowd at the Gap. I mentioned Best, uh, Best Buy are reporting figures as well. And Foot Locker and Abercrombie and Fitch have third word numbers out coming from the United States of America. Uh, as, as always, with the usual kind of structure of the webinar, I'll run through the major markets. As there's any markets I haven't covered and you want me to have a look at, feel free to shout out. So as I mentioned, the FTSE had a positive start to the morning, but then that, 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 quickly, uh, that quickly turned over and it kind of fell in line with the rest of what's going, what's going on in Europe. First thing you notice is that the FTSE 100 after didn't quite get to its all-time high, but got near enough it, uh, only at the beginning of the month, uh, came off here, broke down through, broke below this uh, trendline support, which is in place from late September, which this, this may now act as resistance here, this area here, just shy of 7,500. Traded down here. Notice how it's just currently trading at 7,424, which is basically effectively the low from October. So we're at a, at a potential crucial point here on the FTSE 100. So surely you have a sizable break below the current level of 7,424. We could be heading back down towards the 30 day moving average, which comes into play just south of 7,390. And if you go below that metric, the next big area to watch out for would be 7,300. Should we retake uh, this, ba move back above this this, um, this trend line here, the levels to watch out for to the upside could be the, uh, the October high. A lot of consolidation in around the 7,560 level, and then beyond that, looking up towards 7,600 itself. Take a look now at what's going on in the German market. So the German market, after hitting a, a record high not too long ago, quickly turned over on itself. The market reached record high here, turned over on itself, quite sharply filled this gap here. Remember one of the old myths about gaps is that they're always filled. They're not always filled. That's a myth. They are often filled. And in this instance, they're filled, and I would appear the market is heading south aggressively. As the market's pushing lower here, we can see the Look at the MACD indicator down here on the histogram. We can see how the momentum was previously positive and now it's swung to the negative. So the rate the rate of setting pressure is actually on the rise. So this downward move here has been confirmed by the, the increase in negative momentum, but also can suggest we haven't seen any signs of setting pressure um, weight, um, decline as of yet. So we could even head back down towards the October lows of in around this region here, which comes into play just south of 12,000. Uh, 912,893. So another level to watch out for is the October, sorry, the, the late September high here of 12,847. So we could see a move back down towards this this direction here on the on the on the DAX on the Germany 30. And if we go any further south, we could be looking back down towards this level here, which comes into play at 12,705 from the late one of the um. One of the uh, well, a combination of both uh, late late September high and also kind of the the, the low on the on the on the, on, the, uh, on the on this candle here from the very end of September. But bearing in mind, seeing as we've had a uh, wider upward trend over the months, and 2017 has been in place. We could be if you do move back do 
move back north again. We could be looking towards the low, the beginning of this gap here, back up towards 13,256 at the north of that, heading back up towards 13,400. Take a quick look now what's going on in the French market. Not too dissimilar, whereby the market went down to create an all time high at the end of last month and has been very quickly turning over on itself. Notice how the, the MACD histogram rep, almost rep, show, confirms the move, both the positive move as the market was moving up to all time highs. We could see the histogram was in positive territory, positive momentum was, was, increased, was increasing, so you'd be more confident that it would last. As we saw here, a bit of a sideways move on the price, positive momentum starts to decline ever so slightly, and then of course you see they, it's almost like the buyers ran out of steam, and now quickly the bears are, are in control, and the bears are actually gaining momentum. So as the market is aggressively moving lower, we're seeing a, a sharp increase in negative momentum. So once again, we, we're, we're seeing no signs of setting pressure let up. So this move south could even bring us back down towards the 100-day moving average here. Uh, which comes into play at, at 5,245, or even possibly down to the 200 moving average at 5,186. At 5, but bearing in mind, the wider trend for the last few months has been to the upside, so if we do move back up north again, we could be heading back up towards this area here, 7,475 or 80, and then north of that, the record high, 5,535. U.S. markets have also um, given up some of the ground, but bearing in mind they've been particularly strong the last number of months. So we can see on the U.S. markets, it's first thing first thing you notice on the Dow Jones, the U.S. 30, solid upward trend. We're seeing a bit of a curtail off here in price. It's put to be fair, a bit of a bit of a pullback, a bit of a profit taking session. It's, it's hardly a surprise. If we do move, continue to move south, we may find support in around here at a. 23,250 in around this level here, or even south, if you move, continue to move south of that again, we could even find some support in at 23,000 itself. And it's only kind of a sizable correction where we potentially see the market head all the way back to the 50 day moving average at 22,800 in around that price area here. As you can see, the market was pushing higher and higher, and this is what, one of the reasons why I actually like to keep an eye on the, the MACD indicator. As the market was moving higher here, we could see a steady increase and in in positive momentum. Then we see positive momentum fade and actually turn negative. All the while, the market is going on pushing higher. That's, a, that's what, you, what, what you would call divergence. The market's pushing higher, yet momentum is actually not to be swung into negative territory and actually increasing. That's a sign, and there are, that could be a sign we may see a bit of a correction. So that's why I said we could even go down as far as low potentially as the 50-day moving average because bearing in mind, just saw that the 50 day moving average did act support here in August and September. And then looking back up to the upside, should, we, should the wider upper trend resume, we're heading back up towards the November high here, north of 23,600. And then, of course, China's is looking towards uh, big figures, 23,700, 800, and so on. The SP 500, uh, the US XPX 500, as we call it here, it looks fairly similar. Similar deal again, markets at an all-time high only only last week, and now we're seeing the market actually um, will trade, trade a bit lower, but I haven't seen any, any kind of size of moves to the downside as of yet, but bearing in mind, uh, the, hist the histogram here on the MACD indicator is in negative territory, so, setting, so in terms of the momentum, it's certainly with the sellers at the moment, even though we haven't seen a kind of, in terms of price-wise, a major move to the south. So if we do see any kind of further selling pressure, we may find some support in around this area here at 2,560 or these levels in around here at 2,544, which aren't too far away from the 50-day from the 50 -day moving average at 2,538. Notice how the market it didn't even actually get as low as the 50-day moving average, but buying pressure came into play just north of it. So we could see a repeat situation here, as we did back in September. And then obviously to the upside, traders will be looking towards 2,600, 610, 620, so on and so forth. Now, what we're coming on to now is the gold market. And we've talked a lot about how equity markets have been selling off. 
And gold is your classic flight to quality instrument. Whenever people are uncertain about about the about what's going on, potential turmoil in the world, or an exodus out of equities, you often see corresponding money being pushed into gold. Now we have seen money be pushed into gold. Gold's up a relatively small amount today. But to be honest, gold's been a bit of a boring uh, market the last number of months. Yes, I will do the Spanish 35 uh, in a second. Uh, absolutely, I, uh, I'll cover that in a second after the, after I cover gold. Gold has been, for whatever reason, trading sideways, and it's almost like it's like a, a, like a, a magnet to the 100-day moving average. The 100-day moving average in gold has not been is now, is, is now at 12.79, and as you can see, for the last few weeks, we haven't really moved away, say, ten dollars higher or lower. Uh, even, even that from goes so it's very much a sideways move it's almost like we're kind of cushioned in between the 50 day moving average to the top side and the 30 day moving average to the downside so what we could be looking at is if it's range bound trading bearing in mind it hasn't really moved away a whole lot uh from the 100 day moving average but if we do get a break, we could be looking at a break, uh, obviously move to the north. If we, if we take out the 50-day moving average, that could be a sign that market is breaking to the upside. Should we go north of the, of the 50-day moving average at 12.92? The next le potential level to keep an eye off would be at the October high of 13.06. And then 13.06 heading back up towards 13.16, 13.34 levels in around here. To the downside, we have the trending moving average uh, is, is coming into play at 12.63. This level may act as support or just south of it. The October low at 12.60 or 12.61 will be the October low. And if we move south of 12.61, we may find some support. So some consolidation in this price region here, which comes into play around the 12.30 region. But like I say, gold has been largely... Uh, range bound the last number of weeks and months. Taking a look now, at what's going on in the Spanish 35? Obviously, the political rumblings are still going on within Spain and Catalonia. We have a general election only next month. Uh, we have an election next month, uh, and that's obviously going to be in focus when it, when it comes around. As you can see here, um, this downward channel that the Spanish 35, the, the IBEX 35, was in, it was it was in it a long time before. The situation in Catalonia kicked off. Remember, it was Sunday, the first of October. That uh, was the was the actual referendum. And if you look here, this is the major kind of reaction to the downward move. The market successfully snapped out of the downward trend. Now, what do you know? The market has given up its gains and it's now back within that kind of negative downward channel. So that was kind of that bullish sentiment on the Spanish Spanish 35 was short lived. And like I said, as the market was pushing higher, that was confirmed by a, a steady increase. In positive momentum and then of course the market turned over on itself and now we're, so, we're, we're squarely in negative momentum territory so, so, this, so, the, so the pressure is with the sellers notice how here the low here we, we're now back to a level not seen since early October so we're talking about well we're, we're talking about about a five or a six week low so that that tells you kind of all you need to know about the, uh, the direction and uh, what's been going on in the, in the Spain 35 uh, should we continue this kind of downward trend, we could be like looking at testing the October low, uh, which comes into play at 9,866, and then south of that, head head down towards 9,000, potentially head down towards 9,700, or perhaps even this area here, uh, which would be 9,637 from uh, from actually back from, back from kind of the highs of February uh, to, uh, this year. Any moves higher in the, the Spain 35 uh, may find resistance, not only this kind of the, 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 the trend line resistance, which was, which was in play throughout the summertime, but also notice how the 50 day moving average, this, this blue line here, acted as resistance on a number of occasions in September and October. And then, of course, it, it's, um, its operation, its, um, its uh, duty, as it were, uh, actually kind of. Uh, Flipped around it. Previously acted as resistance and then acted as support. And once the support line was broken, it now may potentially act as resistance yet again. So moves higher in the Spain 35 could encounter resistance at uh, 10,262, and then north of that potentially again. Uh, well, the 100-day moving average and the 20-day moving average are converging. So another potential resistance point would be in around here, which comes into play around 10,367. Taking a look now at the oil markets, which have been uh, 
which has been quite bullish recently, even though we are trading a bit lower since the, since the Friday close. Uh, nonetheless, they have been in quite decent shape. So first thing I'll show you here on the Brent chart is that I'm on this is the, the weekly chart we we'll start off looking at. Brent closed squarely, cl clearly above the two-day week moving average. Now, Brent oil hasn't closed above this two-day week moving average since since June 2014. So over three years, um, it's been three years since since Brent closed above uh, its two-day week moving average, and that'll take us back here. That was back in the, that was back at, um, in, a, in, a, in a time period when oil was well 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 above $100 a barrel. So I'll give you an idea of how long. Uh, how long I've always been in a um, in a downward state? If it's actually been, uh, you know, it's been several years since since uh, Brent oil has actually been trading above its 200 week moving average. So while it remains above of its 200 moving 200 week moving average, that could be a bullish bullish indicator, and it could be a sign that the kind of upward trend that, that it's been in for a few months now could be here to here to stay. The 200 week moving average comes into play at $62.50, so that could potentially act as a level of support. Notice as the market was pushing higher here from June onwards, and we can see a steady increase on the positive momentum. So the buying, pre so the buying moment, so the buying pressure, so the pressure is with the buyers. But as always on the weekly chart, on the daily chart, you get a more kind of clear cut example of a, of a upward trend, creating a series of higher highs and higher lows all the way along. We've written the high here, so we may see a bit of a pullback or a, or a correction. We could potentially see a bit of a we could see a potentially a pullback down towards $62, $61, or, or somewhere around even the kind of $63 mark. It's been a fairly clear. We have had some sizable pullbacks when when, uh, when the oil market has turned around. But bearing in mind the upward trend has been has been has been in place for a number of months. So if we do see a pullback. There are potential areas at 62, 61, and 60, and even down from the September high of $59.51. And then, of course, to the upside, we will be looking towards 65, 66, 67, so on and so forth. WTI looks reasonably similar, but WTI hasn't gotten to its 200-week moving average. Uh, but given that Brent has already gotten there, it could be, at this point, now act as a magnet. So, so WTI last week hit its highest level in, in about 28 months. Uh, we've given back some of the gains this week. Notice how, how uh, on the MACD histogram, momentum is clearly in the on the positive positive side. Uh, we're not too far away. We're currently trading at fifty six dollars and seventy five cents, fifty eight dollars and forty cents. It's roughly where the two week moving average comes into play. So that could be the next target to watch out for to the upside. Should we go north of that, then the psychologically important sixty bucks a barrel would potentially be the next level to keep an eye on. Similar situation again, buying the dip has been a popular strategy with oil traders for the last number of months. It's been in a fairly clear upward trend since June, series of higher highs and higher lows. Bearing in mind, we have seen some sizable corrections when oil has turned around, so just bearing, keep that in mind. Should we move south on WTI, this this, this area here, at the, the bottom of this candle and the top of this candle, in around $55.80, and, and cents, $0.75, cents, this could be one potential area for uh, for um, we may see some buyers enter the fold in around here, or perhaps even at this this price action here, it's a lot of consolidation in around here, which comes into play at fifty four dollars and sixty three cents, and then south of that again uh, at fifty three dollars and fifty six cents. Uh, these are areas we potentially see some buyers step into the fold because, as I mentioned, buying on the dip has been a popular strategy on the oil market for the last number of months. Well, we're now in mid-October. OPEC have a meeting at the end of the month, uh, and 30th of November, and Saudi Arabia and a few other major oil producers have been having have, have been kind of setting the uh, putting the feeders out there after looking at extending the uh, the coordinated production cut beyond the end of March 2018 deadline. Uh, taking a look now at some of the major currency pairs. Uh, we've got a few minutes left on this webinar, but if there's any markets you want me to cover that I haven't covered, feel free to shout out. Uh, for those of you that have either were tuned in in the last few weeks or perhaps have watched the YouTube video because this video will get recorded, I'll get put on Insight, which I'll show you later on, and also gets on our website, and also gets put up on, on YouTube. We we're talking about how the euro dollar is in what appears to be a head and shoulder reversal pattern. And head and shoulder reversal pattern, what it is, 
it effectively when the market pushes higher it creates a high here a higher here uh, which could be construed as the left shoulder then it uh, pulls back to a reaction low pushes on higher here again takes off the previous high this then would be referred to as the hedge moves lower pulls back to the reaction low here and notice how the low here the reaction low here after coming off of the new higher high is basically in line uh, with the reaction low from this high here so that could that could be construed draw a line across it and you technical technical analysts refer to that as the the neckline and then what, what, what does the market do if, if after uh, it gets to the reaction low it pushes higher here again but notice how not only does it not take out this high that was created here it sort of runs out of steam on, around at the same height as this high here so it kind of acts as a you know left shoulder head right shoulder and if you look at the textbook example when the market if the market if it is in a head and shoulders reversal pattern what it could do then is if the market breaks below this area here called the neckline which is kind of a line across where the two reaction lows are it often goes up and retests that line before potentially moving south again so we've had a few tests of that line so while the market remains south of the neckline here in around one spot 1670 or maybe maybe even as high as 117 what remains south of that we can then see a, a further move to the downside and the kind of classic measurement how do you measure you know potential price target uh, to the downside from a head and toe reversal you, you take the high from the high from the head here down to the neckline which comes into play play in around 11670 11670 up to 12092 you're talking over 400 pips there so and you project that to the downside from the neckline so we, we could be heading back south of 112 on the euro versus the us dollar but obviously on the way down the other other potential areas of support may come into play such as in around the consolidation from in around here at 114.79 or indeed the 20 moving average just south of the 113 level taking a look now what's going on with the british pound obviously uh yeah i'll have a look at, at the Aussie dollar and the kiwi versus the japanese yen in a, in a couple of uh in a couple of charts time so even though we have had a fairly decent sell-off in the British pound today, uh, if you draw a trend line from the lows of March, connecting the, uh, the August low and projecting it out here, we can see that for most of November, the British pound has been trading well, in and around, and in many cases, just south of this trend line here. And that this trend line here also coincides with the one-day moving average and the one day moving average on the on the on the on cable the pound versus us dollar acted as a bit of support here in late september and, and also in a bit of mid-august so we, this particular combination of the, the one day moving average and the trend line while we could have while we, we remain in that broad area and while we, we remain north of the 130 mark we could continue to see we could we could see the wider broadly speaking bullish trend that pound that the, that the pound has been in for about seven or eight months now continue versus the us dollar but that's on the kind of proviso it stays north of the kind of 130 mark but if it moves south of 130 we could be heading back down towards 129 or possibly even down as low as the 20 moving average which comes into play at 128 spot one spot 28 70 but then but if it does manage to kind of hang on to they're going to up the broadly speaking upper trend that's been in place since march we could we could be heading back up towards the august high of 133335 and then beyond that up towards this price area here we saw a lot of consolidation in this area in at one spot 3452 go over now and take a look at the euro versus the british pound Euro sterling has been relatively range bound um, the last the last few weeks. Been tra trading in a fairly tightish range of about about 100 pips. It's almost kind of like locked in between, say, the one, the 30 moving average to the downside and about the 50 day moving average to the upside. And it does appear that we, we have traded north of the 50 day moving average. So if we manage to kind of go beyond the 100 day moving average at zero spot 89.46, we can then potentially target go north of the october highs and target this area here 
I'd like to see the market go north of zero spot 90.49 before we can get a more confident. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. I'd like to see the market go north of this mark of this price area here, uh, zero spot 90.49 before you become more confident that the upward move is going to last. Because, like I say, it's been trading in a kind of a range bound the last few months. You know, kind of broadly speaking, zero spot 90 to, to, to the high, and zero spot 88, or maybe even the, uh, maybe zero spot 80, 30 or 50, uh, or 30 20 to the low. But if you do continue in, the, in this area, um, let potential level of support come into play, maybe at the 20 moving average at a zero spot 8770, or even down as low as the November low at zero spot 8733. And then, of course, if you go south of that, that'll be clear, uh, that'll be. Uh, an indication that we've got further ground to lose heading back down towards this area here in around the 0 0.86 region take a look now at the US dollar versus Japanese yen um, even though the, the, the dollar versus the yen has been in decline the last few past few less week or so the broad move from se from September upwards is still is still in place um, uh, but if we, if, but at the rate as the market's coming off here, we can see that negative momentum is on the rise. So it could be an indication that, we're, that we haven't seen any indication that this downward move is going to come to an end. So the momentum is with the seller, so we could see further pressure on the dollar versus the Japanese yen. So we could be heading back down towards 113. If we go south of 113, we may, we may the next level to watch, potentially watch out for could be the 50 day moving average in at 112 spot 31. And then south of that, uh, at the 20 moving average at 111 spot 76. Notice how the 20 moving average kind of acted as a bit of support, didn't get too far below it. I think this is a, it is, is a lesson in why uh, you shouldn't have your stops too close to be it moving average metrics or trend lines or actually just even points of support and or resistance. Because it's be quite rare for a market just to hit a precise point and then this turned around, you, you can have scenarios of 5 or 10 or, or 15 pips or points move uh, north of it or south of it before the market, can, um, before the market actually properly um, respects that particular price area. So if the wider upper trend has been in place since September on the dollar versus Japanese yen continues, uh, the November high of 114.73 will be potentially the next level to watch out for. And then beyond that, looking up towards in around the region of 115.62, a level not seen for quite some time since uh, since early 2017 on the dollar versus the Japanese yen. Uh, I'll have a look now at the Aussie versus the US dollar as per your request. Very much range bound um, on the Aussie versus US dollar and keeping an eye on what's going on here. It's been it's sort of trapped between the 30 moving average. Uh, well, let's call that let's kind of let's call that price in around zero spot 77 is kind of sort of like the big figure to the upside and then a downside. It's not even to the downside of the support line drawn in, in here at zero spot 6225. So it's quite a narrow range. And if you like range bound trading, um, which which which, um, which some traders do. It's been in a, in a quite a tight range, but obviously, if we do see a break out of that range, that could be a sign that the sideways move is over, and then you should actually kind of adopt to whichever move uh, that the market is heading in, because the market, it's sort of a scenario. Whenever a market is remains in a range, it's it um it can, whenever a market the longer a market remains in a range, the longer it likely is to stay in a range. But whenever you see a, do, a, a break out of it, it can be quite aggressive, whichever move, whichever direction that move that is in. So if we do see a move to the downside, uh, if we go south of 0 spot 7.625, it could be like an end down towards 0 spot 7.6, the figure itself. And then potential areas of of, um, of, of, consolidate, of of potential areas of support may come into play in around the, this, this area, this, this price area, this price area area here in around the 0 spot 7.5 region or, or down to even the, um, the lows of June in uh, 0 spot 7.3.7.3. To the upside, if you manage to break north of the 20-day moving average at zero spot seven zero spot seven seven, potential potential next level resistance uh, would, would be in at zero spot seven seven three three, and then looking beyond that again, 
up towards the October high, just shy of 0 spot 0.79. Right, the last market now I'll look at, because uh, we're just, just five minutes past the, our, our, our time, uh, the, the New Zealand dollar versus the Japanese yen. So click on the library. This is scrolling back here under currencies. Go to the bottom of the list now. New Zealand dollar versus the Japanese yen. Well, looking at the high here from, uh, from early September and also the high here from July, it's obviously a fairly decent uh, level, uh, level of resistance here. And it would appear the market is could be heading back down towards the August, sorry, the April low here. After, after having quite a decent sell-off here in July, market pushed higher, couldn't quite get there, created another multi-month low here, and now we've, put, we've pushed higher. And this may be the beginning of another move, another potential leg lower back down towards south of 76. If you look here, how um, on the market, this is one, this is one of the reasons why I, I really like using the MACD histogram, MACD indicator. While the market was pushing higher here, creating multi-month highs all the way along, up until this point here, you can see that the histogram was in the momentum was in clearly in positive territory so it can be more so it was almost conf it was it was confirming a positive move market was going higher the, the positive momentum is increasing the momentum is with the buyers and then what do we see all of a sudden we see um the, the bulls turn that the bears uh, the sellers become become in, in control but yet price is the most important indicator and what happens the market actually continues to push higher and creep to multi-month highs but then very quickly finally the kind of pressure builds and the market aggressively sells off and as you can see here as the market was selling off there's a sizable increase in negative momentum so seeing as a fairly decent move to the downside market found support in around this this price area here which we're actually basically at at the moment at around 78.30 pushed higher here again created the lower low lower high here and if you kind of look at this take this they take this move as kind of all one here gone on to create a, a lower low in october a level not seen since may we pushed higher here and we just can't really and it would appear that we're kind of potentially going to move south again because as the market's coming off here we can see on the on the market histogram positive momentum is slipping so whatever 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 um buying pressure is out there is falling and it wasn't that long ago we were at a multi-month low, so we could be heading back down towards this area here at 77 spot 40. And then if you take off that level, we be heading back to, down towards the uh, the April low, up, which would be in come to play at 75 spot 70. But if you do happen to uh, stick, stick, we need to kind of break out at least above um above the, the, this price action here at 79.42, the uh, the November high to kind of buck off the um. The kind of downward trend that has been in since July. And then if you go north of that, next level to watch out for potentially will be this area here, the 30-day moving average, which also in around the 50-day moving average at 79 spot 72. Uh, that is that is it in terms of the markets we're going to cover today. As I mentioned, this uh, video recording of this webinar is going to be on our insight, which is on my trading platform is here on the right. To find where insight is, go to the market pulse. Uh, second tab down, market insight. Uh, some of the some of the uh, analysis that I used in today's webinar can also be found on the chart forum. The chart forum can be found the third option down from the market pulse. I talked about economic indicators that are due out uh, later on this week. Fourth option down the market pulse is our market calendar here. Gives you a rundown of what um, what economic indicators are coming out, what time they're coming out, what is, what the forecast is, and what the previous reading was. Keep an eye on that because you got some important economic indicators out this week. 
Uh, I showed you already whereabouts you can find our um, news and analysis. Some of the updates we do get gets put on Insight, other ones get put on um, the the actual website itself rather than the training platform. And lastly, I'll just quickly show, uh, talk about other we webinars that are coming up. Um, tonight at 7 p.m. London time, we have the we have a seminar. Uh, and, and the title of the seminar is this one here. It is Trader Development Program Part 2, Trade with a, with a Precision Strategy, on Wednesday, the 15th of November at 7.30 p.m. London time. We have a, tra we have a webinar covering trading on the edge. And then, of course, back to uh, next one, Monday with myself at 12.15. Thank you for your patience. Um, have a good trading week. And thank you for all of us here at CMC Markets. I've been Dave Madden. Thank you uh, very much. Have a good trading week and good luck.